there were a couple of comments and questions about uh, environmental conditions. We're talking about all of these things. Uh, and, and Michael brought up the point, do you only go out when the conditions are perfect? In, in 35 years of photographing, the conditions have been perfect, I think, twice. Okay? So, you have, to, you have to learn these techniques, and then you modify them by what's going on in the environment. Okay? For instance, on Wednesday, we were in Iroquois County, there were hundreds of butterflies. It was sunny, and the wind was blowing 30 miles an hour. So what do you do? Okay, well, the wind only blows in one direction. So these they were, well, the insects were sitting on these tall flowers. They were blowing back and forth in the wind, and it was sunny. So what do you do? Well. You get parallel, you use a high shutter speed, you put the, the, the uh, sun over your shoulder, and you, you take a picture. I mean, you know, can you tell it's windy and, you know, you, you can't tell. That was Sue's photo. Here's, here's one to show you the, the, pass this one. I want you to show you the, the importance of depth of field for those two photos. I want you to, it's exactly the same time. The only thing I did was change the, Aperture f-stop ratio. And here's one about the importance of getting parallel to this subject. Okay? Parallel, parallel, parallel. Okay, this one is not exactly parallel, but it's close enough. Okay, so we took hundreds and hundreds of pictures of it, and you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it until but, but you, as Sue said, you can't be reading your camera manual out in the field. It just doesn't work. That's what, that's what you do with your garden. We've posted a bunch of those, right? We've posted a bunch of those yeah. on our website. Yeah. And other people are going to start doing them. That where they can post their pictures. And they can post pictures. Yeah, that's, I mean, I got that for not posting, so I'm by <laughs> So, yeah, that's our medium for communicating with each other. Okay, and you write about what you want. You post. You, you can post anything you want. So that's that's our, and it is it is secure. So that's this is our, and and this was. Susan, I'm going to show you the importance of sharpness. Look at the sharpness on that, and that is simply because there's no depth of field. It's getting, getting the critical sharpness, you know, handheld, blowing in the wind, all these conditions, and all that is is experience. Experience, experience, experience. Okay? And where do you practice this? In your garden, at home. And when you go out, you get an extraordinary opportunity, you're ready for it. Okay? You know, I bought a new camera, and all I'm going to go out. $10,000 trip, and I'll learn how to use the camera and get back. You know? It doesn't quite work that way. Okay. If, if, uh, if we waited for perfect conditions, I wouldn't have been outside. I've been sitting in the hotel in their air conditioning yesterday all day, you know, because it was miserable. Bugs, wind, heat, humidity, kicks. You know, but as soon as we started seeing stuff, you forget all about it. Okay, it just becomes not an issue. Okay, if we can set up the lights down, we're going to talk about <coughs> something that you can control by when you go out. And that's the quality of light. We talked about this a little bit last week. All right. If you're, you know, I get up late, I have breakfast, and then I'll go out and take some pictures. And by 3 o'clock, I'm done. It's coffee hour or cocktail hour. That's kind of photography. That's fine. That's when we were out yesterday. <coughs> if you're going to do butterflies, that's when butterflies are active and a lot of insects. So, most photos are taken at this time. It has the least interesting lighting if the sun is out. You know, the sun was out yesterday because it has the most contrast. We talk about contrast back there. You know, the difference between light and dark. But both of these were taken near noon. Okay. 
How do you how do you do that? How do you minimize contrast? By the where the sun is in relationship to you, and by how you expose. Most people have a tendency to overexpose, give too much light when it's really contrasting. Or do the opposite. Okay? You're underexposed. This one's underexposed. This one was underexposed. And they're both of it's, it's nice to have sun because you get beautiful reflections, you know, and, and this is very contrasting, yet it's still an acceptable image. And this, this is one of those plants in the context of the landscape where they're going. So over the shoulder, over the over the shoulder lighting usually means the sun is behind you, right? That's the classic, you don't have to be, but when the sun is at you know really high in the sky. It needs to be pretty much behind you. Otherwise, you're getting you're shooting into the sun. You're getting lens flare. You're getting all sorts of problems created. And the right angles work. Why? Pardon? Right angles with the direction. Yeah. Wide angle or no, right, right, angle. right? That's when it's lower. No, it's sort of like over your back. Yeah. Yeah. You change your own time. Right. If your shot, if the, the rule of thumb is your shadow should point at the subject. The sun is high in the sky, unless it's right over top. It's never right over top in Illinois, unless you're on the equator. So if the shadow is pointing at the subject, then, then that's about the best you're going to do. All right. Sunrise lighting. Why do photographers go up early in the morning? They'll tell you it's for the pure blue cast lighting. You know, we talked about that last week. What they don't tell you is in most places in the world, in the early morning, it is cooler. And? No wind. Calm. Calm. You do not get reflections like this if the wind is blowing, right? Does it just move it around? Yes. Lower contrast, beautiful light, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, early morning, good time. Sunset, good time. Sunset. But what happens in the near sunset? The wind dies down. And the light, particularly around here, and the farmer's been out stirring up the, the dirt that gets in the air and the light. It's the most beautiful sunsets this, this month because we're farming. The air is full of dust, you know, you get this beautiful uh, you know, warm light. One thing you gotta make sure about in Illinois is we also have lots of jet trails. Yeah. yeah. Not so good. So, well, here's warm lighting. Warm lighting, our late afternoon sun is very contrasty, yeah, but, but it's a lower contrast than that high, high sun because it's angled. So you get, you get more, the shadows become interesting instead of just annoying. Okay? Sharp detail without having too much contrast while the lighting is at an angle. You, you've seen the photo of this one where it's just like this. Well, this, is a, this is a more challenging angle. And what happens when you do that, you see the background here, which is nice and mute, comes into play because you have to, it's just a compromise that you have to do. And you still have a nice shadow. You still have a nice shadow of the beak, you know, you got the S shape, you know, and you, all those things that you, basically you see the image in the viewfinder, so oh, that's a nice image, and click. That's what happens if you have these things in your mind that you know, yes, I mean, I did that. You don't, you don't go through a mental checklist. You know, a, a pilot would, before they take the plane off, goes through a mental checklist. But if there's a dog fight, I guarantee the pilot's not. Let's see, do I turn the wheel button? You know, it, it's the same scenario. Okay, side lighting. If the sun is perpendicular to the plane where you're looking at, most nature, nature history subjects are translucent. They transmit light. Very beautiful light, directionality, warm. This is the one that's used very little, even, even this eagle. You can tell this, this is early morning directional light, see where it's coming from. Can look from over here, right? It's more interesting than if this eagle was photographed at noon, I guarantee it, okay? Because it, everything will wash out at noon. Still an eagle, but Backlighting, that's when the sun is between, subject is between you and the sun. This 
is pretty tough to do because you have two things tend to happen. You tend to underexpose and you tend to get <coughs> lens flare. Okay. Anybody ever buy a camera and come with the lens hood? And you like throw that away and like, what do I need that for? <laughs> That's what it's for. You get lenses, not to protect the front of your camera, it's to get rid of lens flare. Okay? Here's one, this is side lighting and back lighting. Okay? It's the most dramatic type of lighting, you know. If, if a, a fuzzy animal is opaque, it, it glows around the edges, you know, you get all sorts of mean effects. Warm or cool. Backlighting in the morning is cool, backlighting in the af late afternoon is warm. It happens twice a day. Okay? Or depending on your perspective, it can happen more often if you don't mind laying down. And backlighting gives you options. Okay, what, what is it? It's dark. How did you stop the geese from flying when it's dark? See, that, that doesn't add up, does it? These geese are flying, they're, they're sharp, and yet it's, what, 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 what happened? See this area here, which is, you ever seen the sun go down? There's this brilliant white line across the sky. That's what you meet her on. And the camera says, man, you got plenty of light. So you meet her on that, and you, and you, you stop down, you shoot a high shutter speed, and, and the geese are stopped. Did the sunset look like this? It was brighter than this. Okay, it was brighter than this. But, so by closing down the lens, you give yourself the otherwise you got blurry geese. Okay? I show the people say, well you couldn't possibly have taken that. Of course, of course you did. Okay, you simply this was bright, this was white with no detail, and you manipulated that in the camera to make it not white with, with no detail. Alright, this is my favorite. Flat or overcast. Okay? That's my perfect condition. If it's calm, high overcast, spring. Best color saturation and the least contrast. If you notice, one thing I notice about a lot of your pictures is they're not very saturated. Okay, that's two phenomena there. One, the lighting is wrong, you're a little bit overexposed, and two, your, your printing is not as good as it might be. Okay? Now, I, I realize some of you just bring in laser proofs. That color saturation and, and reducing contrast makes for stronger images. Okay? That looks like a painting. Okay? There's no contrast, absolutely. Depth of field, you know, that's what low contrast imagery looks like. Same thing with insects, everything. Why when it's cloudy? I know the butterflies don't fly much when it's cloudy, but that's okay. Deal with them another way. So flat, overcast, lighting, carry an umbrella, you know. Okay. Carry your cloud. That's my happy cloud. Sounds before. Without width. Okay. It is a dramatic. The, the dragonfly, you took, you took the dragonfly? That had been shaded? Right on. Now I realize some, sometimes when you shade something, it flies away. Sometimes when you shade something, it goes, oh, the sun's in. I'm just going to sit here. So you take your chances. Okay? All right. So what happens when you ignore all this stuff? Yeah. We were in, I don't know, Alligator Alley, and he's recording. Purple Gala News. I got so excited. This was a film. So, now I thought, oh, I, I, I got that. Eh. Bad composition, bad lighting, and you know. No, it just doesn't work. Okay. Even if it's courting Gala News, who cares if it's a, you can't tell, all right? So, don't ignore that. Okay? And you can't, Fix this in Photoshop. You cannot modify this. Yes, you can change white balance all you want. It doesn't, 
not going to be the same as going out when the conditions are right. If you think, you know, you're not going to get anything, any more technical stuff. I mean, you've got enough already. You've got enough to know. You just have to figure out how to do it. And you have to figure out what your camera is capable of doing. And when, you, when your camera is maxed out with what it can do and you're maxed out what you can do, then you're a photographer. That's all it means, right? All right, now we're going to do the same thing we did with plants. We're going to do it with wildlife. So they're all the same, right? Photographing wildlife, photographing plants is exactly the same, with one exception. Right. One, we've got to find them, and two, they're not necessarily going to stay around while you, and this is the glamour, you know, like, this is the stuff that sells, right? I don't know if any of you have heard of Richard Day, you know? professional photographer, he's a wonderful bird photographer and, and does some insects and stuff, but he only takes, we go out in the field with him and I'm frustrated because I'm looking at you, look here, he's like, I know, but that won't sell.